canal locks who doesn't love a canal lock and who doesn't love a walk by the canal or a cycle by the canal locks are ingenious things and they, they go right back obviously to the late 1700s but what are they like when they're drained and that's what we're going to show you today when these locks are completely drained and there's no water in them Martin welcome back to another video I'm here in a drained canal lock we're on the Shropshire Union Canal and the Canal and Rivers Trust have drained this lock to replace the lock gates so we're gonna have a good mooch around they're gonna be telling you all about the work that they're doing and looking in depth at this now drained lock and it's massive so the Canal and River Trust skilled teams and volunteers protect the canals all year round but in winter some incredible feats of engineering take place and they've given us the chance today to go behind the scenes and learn more about how they repair and care for the canals. So this week we're at Ellesmere Port. In fact, we're at the top end, the northern end of the Shropshire Union Canal. And we're going to take a look at this uh, canal basin here. It used to be a very busy industrial place. You'll also see in the basin, it also has the National Waterways Museum. So we might just have a quick peek at that and see what it has to offer. So I was asking what they may have found while they drained the, this part of the lock and uh, apparently the most interesting thing is a few mobile phones and bits off boats. Now just to give you a bit of context here, just picture sort of helps. Uh, Shropshire Union Canal comes in there at the top of the picture, goes through two locks and then it goes down into a basin. The lock that's been drained is the one there between the two X's and that's where we are, that's what we're looking at. Just so you can see an overview of what, what we're doing today. You'll notice there the museum as well and in a bit I'll give you a very quick taster of what you can expect to see in that museum. Okay, so a bit of wind on this clip so I'll voice it over. I was asking where the paddles are because you have to winch up the paddles to uh, let the water flow from one section of the lock into another to either raise or lower the water level. Uh, so I, the, apparently they're behind the lock gates here. So I'm going to stick my camera in there now and I'm going to show you the paddles. Now obviously when you drain a canal or a canal lock you have to be mindful of the residents that live down here. Of course I'm talking about fish and I was told by the Canal and Rivers Trust volunteers that they had to rescue and replace further up, up the canal up to 30 eels that were living in this uh, canal lock. That would have been fascinating to see and I would have loved to have seen like, you know, just how big they grow down here in the uh, the murky darkness of the canal lock. So the reason for draining the canal lock and doing all this work is so that they can replace the lock gates up at the top end here. These gates were built in the uh, the trust's own workshops, um, custom built for this lock obviously. Uh, I asked what they were made of because I'm always interested in what wood they use. Uh, apparently they're oak. Uh, a few of the parts there, the metal parts that go into making a, um, a lock gate. And of course the net there that is uh, they use for catching all those eels. And all the time, obviously, you can hear the pumps running, and that's because there's a constant flow of water from uh, the canal further, further upstream, for want of a better word, that's constantly flowing down and uh, just trickling in. So they need to constantly maintain the pumps to keep the lock dry. <laughs> Now, 
Now, despite the fact that the base of the locks, the bottom of the locks are full of mud and everything, you know, you think, my God, how deep is that mud? It's years old. The bottom of the locks is actually brick, as you can see here. So it's almost like a bit of a bowl when you get to a canal lock. Um, I just love the fact that you can see this old uh, Georgian brickwork here. To think that this brickwork dates from 1793 and it's as good as any modern brickwork. Okay, caked in mud, but it's still brilliant, to be honest with you. I'm actually looking for mason's marks on the, uh, the, the, uh, the stones, but I can't see any at the moment. It's quite deep and quite scary to think when this is full of water, how just how deep it really is. So this work is ongoing throughout winter and I'm filming this in January. So if you would like the chance as well to also take a look at what they're doing on the various projects around the country, if you head to the Canal and Rivers Trust website, you can pick a, an event and you can go and see what they do as well. Now, like I said at the start of the video, who doesn't love a canal? Whether you're walking, running, riding or sailing, we all love the canals. Uh, don't forget the Canal and Rivers Trust that look after our canals are a charity. There is a section on the webpage where you can make a donation. So if you want to drop them a couple of quid, feel free to do that. And I'll leave a link pinned in the first comment as well for you. Just on the banks of the uh, Manchester Ship Canal, James, what have you got for us? So I've got a finest cup of tea. The selection of teas. Um, we've got some uh, Kit And the selection of biscuits. Exciting. Thanks very much. Are you excited? <laughs> yeah. Of course, the man you all love is never happy. He's not happy with his biscuit that he's got. Not happy with your brew, are you? What have you got? What do you think of the lock? Really good. Good, isn't it? They're good to stand in, stand like in the actual lock itself. As per usual, we wanted to go more, more than what we were yeah. allowed, really, which is, but well, it's all safety, you know what I mean? It's got to be safe. But we wanted to just go waded in the lock. So as you can see, this is the Manchester Ship Canal. Over to the left of that bank that you're looking at now is the Mersey, the River Mersey Estuary. Here's our little um, canal basin in context for you, as, it's, as it is today. You can see there the Manchester Ship Canal on the left of the screen now. This was a very industrial uh, hub at one time. This top part of the Shrops Union Canal, which is uh, otherwise known affectionately as the Shroppy, this top part was built in 1797, obviously during the canal building frenzy. Um, Thomas Telford's last big civil engineering project, apparently, but I had to ask the question, if we sat next to the Manchester Ship Canal, dated around 1894, and the Shroppy is dated 1797, surely at one point the Shroppy fed directly into the Mersey. Hmm, I just had to ask that question, so let's go and find a volunteer, and this particular volunteer is called Mike, and he's going to shed some light on this subject for us. Am I right, Mike? That's, you're absolutely right, spot yeah. on, and if you look carefully, you might not be able to see along the top of the roof line yeah there's a little um the top of the lighthouse yeah and that lighthouse was there to enable boats and barges coming off the mersey to find this little entrance into the ah, into the right into right. the uh, canal so they could bring their goods so uh, that and, and transship here in this canal town so what we're looking at now that predates the manchester ship canal Ab at the lighthouse abs absolutely the manchester ship canal is really a newcomer <laughs> yeah, in some yeah. ways Right, if you don't mind, just give me a minute on the maps with you. There's our basin there. Shrops Union Canal comes this way and it ends here at Ellesmere Port and there's our basin. That is the Manchester Ship Canal, right? I want to pull out here and just show you. Um, this area here is called Stanlow Banks and it looks like they're probably uh, mud banks, sand banks, which are probably dangerous to ship in. Um, you can see the navigable navigable bits here, but there's the ship canal. Anyway, <clears throat> ship canal starts there down at Eastern Locks, uh, and I took you there on a previous video where we did a little sailing trip down the Manchester Ship Canal. But we're talking about the days before the ship canal was built. So let's click to the old maps. There you go, the old maps before the Manchester Ship Canal existed. Uh, and there's our lighthouse that I've shown you, the little lighthouse. Uh, there's the shroppy, and there's the very lock that we've been in. Uh, it had its own gas works as well, uh, the, uh, the, the the basin. It had its own gas works, and you can see some of the old gas pipes still uh, around from those days. You'd be forgiven for thinking that was the ship canal, but if we pull out, like I say, this map predates the ship canal. There's Stanlow Banks, and it's just that what you're looking at is just looks like a, like a bit of a navigable bit 
of the uh, Stanlaw banks. Um, very interested. And they've exploited, they built the basin there to probably exploit that and be able to send ships up there or boats up there over to, uh, to Liverpool and out into the Irish Sea. Let's come back down here. But I think the ship canal exploits that navigable bit as well. Um, because imagine having to dredge these for the ship canal. And if you look up here, it kind of ends there. But then it's re-navigable there. And this is, uh, I think Eastham is round here. The Eastham Locks area is round here. But there you go. I just thought I'd show you that. And, and it was interesting the way the Shroppy did actually... It, uh, enter the um, the Mersey estuary and how it and, uh, exploited that navigable bit there and then later on possibly the uh, ship canal uh, exploited that navigable bit as well up here. Um, could be wrong but it, that's what it looks like to me but uh, there you go there's Ellesmere Port and our basin and there you can see it entered straight into the river Mersey estuary. See that building there? That's the offices of the Manchester ship canal or it was the offices of the Manchester Ship Canal. Quite nice. Right, so back to the canal basin. And I'm just going to quickly show you some of the buildings and what is briefly inside the museum, some of my favourite things. But I spy a chimney and I spy what looks like a boiler house. Mike, what's that about? This is really an example of how this canal port actually kept up with modern, efficient ways of handling cargo. And in the 1880s, 1890s, uh, Armstrong, of the, of the famous W.G. Armstrong, uh, built hydraulic power to power cranes. We had hydraulic high-pressure water, so that the steam engines in the building on the right were powered by two Lancashire boilers on the left, and that's the chimney uh, for, the, for the boilers behind. So we've come across this high pressure water before because Manchester had a system that uh, fed around the city centre. Beautiful chimney, uh, as you can see there, and apparently there was uh, the boilers um, pressurised the mechanism that was inside this accumulator tower and then the weight sat on top of the water, kept it under pressure and fed it round the site um, and it opened lock gates and it powered cranes and all sorts of things and lifting mechanisms and I just love that beautiful wooden uh, accumulator tower there. So this part of the museum when you come upstairs this was a grain warehouse down below the boats unloaded and we, the, the, the grain was brought up here. I'm just going to show you these doors here how they would have loaded through them doors and those would have opened and you would have got the boats down there unloading and raising the grain up so finally i knew it was here but um i forgot it was here we've actually got a starvationer so all the videos we've done about the berry bolton canal about wet earth colliery we've even found one at one point and an abandoned one they've actually got a starvationer here the old slim boat that used to go in the mines at worsley and it's uh, quite complete and you can see how it actually used to be. So there you go, that's the starvation of there coming out of the mines at Worsley. And these were ubiquitous, these things around the canals. Um, around Manchester, the Berry Bolton Canal, the Worsley Canals. This was the start of containerization because they loaded boxes in. They filled the boxes with coal, they loaded the boxes into the starvationer. And obviously they floated it down the canals. But then to see one here at the uh, the boat museum was absolutely wonderful to be able to find the look at one touch it and walk around it and, and look at how they actually were so a very bit of an iconic moment for me this looking at this starvationer um and this would have had one hell of a history on the canals carrying coal see that boat there at the back do you know what that was oh, yeah. gifford 1926 oil tanker can you believe? Horse-drawn oil tanker. So Mike, we've got an interesting boat there to your right. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, that is a really interesting boat. It's a 1912 tunnel tug. All boats were towed by horses. Difficult to go through tunnels, so tugs like this towed perhaps half a dozen loaded boats, each with, say, 30 tonnes, through a, through a very narrow tunnel. Wow. This is from the Worcester and Birmingham Canal, but it's been here at the museum for getting on for 50 years. Wow. 
So incredibly, this is from the ship canal when they were building it. This is the diving equipment from the guys that went down to maintain and build the locks. That is unbelievable. <laughs> Look at that. It's like if this is some kind of a bellows that you wound to, to send air through to the, uh, so. the divers. Unbelievable. I love that diving stuff. Proper old school diving stuff, that wasn't it? Brilliant. Uh, quite a bit of ship canal stuff here in the uh, Waterways Museum. So if you find yourself near Ellesmere Port, get yourself down there. Check check the place out. Some absolutely loves, lovely stuff here and some real um, gems amongst uh, everything else you can look at. Love these lamps here. Brilliant. So there you go. The National Waterways Museum. And there was lots of um, exhibits outside, full boats outside as well that you could go and take a look at. Right, so there you go, the Shropshire Union Canal. And uh, we're going to say goodbye to you here on the banks of the Manchester Ship Canal with the Mersey over there in the background. Do you like it, James? Yeah, it was all right. Gary? Yep. Bob on. Bob on. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. See you in a bit. But there's something down here that I've heard of. I'm hoping it exists, and if it does, it's a proper gem. It's a new one. That was a difficult journey. And it's here. We've found it. It's there.